Hi everyone and good morning. My name is Yvonne and I'm a product expert here at Tally. Thank you for joining me today as we walk through how to use the Tally app on Androids and iPhones. Following this webinar, you will be able to upload photos, categorize expenses, format your reports, and submit your expenses seamlessly all from your phone. I'm going to go ahead and share or show my screen now. So you should be able to see my um, iPhone as well as the background um, of my Tally account. Now the app and the website do work together and you'll see that demonstrated throughout this webinar. Um, anything you upload via the app will display on the website and vice versa. Now as both the iPhone and Android apps are very similar, I will be using the iOS version for the purposes of this webinar. You can download the iOS Tally app by going to the Apple Store, searching for Tally, and downloading. You will be able to log in using the same credentials that you would on the web version. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to my Tally and log into my account. So one quick note is that if you haven't logged in yet, you will want to log in on the website first um, just to make sure that you have your credentials set up and your account linked properly. Then you can go ahead and actually log in on the website. Or log in the app, excuse me. Perfect. Once you've logged in, you will be brought to the screen. At the moment, I don't have any unsubmitted expenses. However, if you tap the three bars in the upper left corner, you're going to get brought to this screen, which will be able to view all of the different reports you have in Tally, including unsubmitted, submitted, and approved. In my case, I only have this one report here, the one that I'm currently working on. However, if I did have any that were submitted, approved, or just multiple reports that were pending submission, you would see them listed here. Now, in the far upper left corner, you'll see a button that should have your initials on it. If you go ahead and tap this, you'll see that your Tally account will be listed here. Additionally, you will have the sign out option at the bottom. So whenever you're done uploading receipts and categorizing expenses, you can just sign out of the app if you need to. Additionally, if you do have multiple Tally accounts, whether you're an affiliate or just a user who has access to a couple different ones, you can switch between the apps here. Now I'm going to navigate back to the main screen, and there are primarily two main ways to upload receipts into the app. You can access both methods by clicking the green plus icon at the bottom of the screen. From here, once I tap this, the camera will be pulled up automatically. So the first op method, obviously, would be just to take a snap of the receipt. So I have one here. Let me go ahead and take a quick picture here. Um, so just focus on the picture and take it. If you take a bad picture, you can obviously always retake it. In this case, I think it's a pretty decent photo, so I'm going to go ahead and click Use Receipt. Tally will now start to scan the receipt for three things, merchant, date, and amount. If it cannot read something, maybe the date is too hard to read or the merchant might be a little crumpled, you'll always be able to enter that information manually. So if I wanted to go ahead and tap in, for example, into the amount or anything like that, you'll see it just pulled up the date. It's going through and processing everything else. If I wanted to go and say, all right, this is actually for 12.15, I can just tap on it, enter in the information, and you'll see it'll update. So tap into any of the fields here for merchant. You can just tap on no merchant provided. Expense category, you could tap that as well date already read that I entered. Um, so we'll go through and just enter this information. Delaware North. Done. And I'm going to map this to an expense category. Hit Save Expense. So if you take a picture and let it start to process, Tally will go through and process the information in a couple of minutes. If you're in a hurry and need to submit your expense report right then and there, you can go ahead and just override it manually if you need to. Um, so I can go ahead and also select any other information I need to. Um, as I said before, merchant, expense category, date, amount. If you need to change the currency, you can always tap this here, and it will bring you to this large list of currencies. Additionally, you can make something billable or not billable by changing that toggle there. 
Additionally, and depending on how your account is configured, you may see a couple different options in the expense details section. So right now my account is configured for classes. Um, however, if I did have projects, customers, departments, um, anything that's been required by your account admin, you would see displaying here. And you could go ahead and just tap into it if you needed to. So if I want to add a class, I can go ahead and choose something. Um, if I wanted to enter attendees, this is typically an option for meals and entertainment expense categories. I would be able to tap into that, add the name of anybody who maybe attended that, and then select it from down here and then hit done, and you'll see this information will start to fill out here. Reasons is also another free text field if I wanted to say um, coffee uh, for interview, I can. Hit done. Once you've filled out all the information, you can hit save expense and it updates. Now in the background, you'll see Delaware North. You'll see all the information I just filled out, um, as well as the amount the merchant, everything else that's in here. Um, now there's a couple different options you can actually use on the expense itself. So in the top right corner here, you'll see three different dots. If I click on that, you'll see delete, move expense, and duplicate expense. Delete means you're going to delete this entire expense. It'd be the same as clicking the trash can icon on the expense tile. Move expense is a little bit more advanced. It would be if you wanted to move this expense to a different expense report. Now, at the beginning of the webinar, you remember I did only have that one expense report. So in my case, I would have to create a new report and move that there. Again, typically a more advanced feature. Um, most people, when they start to use the app, just use it primarily to upload expenses into the system and then do all their expense report format on the website. Um, but it is up to you if you want to give it a try. And then duplicate expense is also an option that's only available on the app. And this allows you to just copy the information from an expense as another expense tile. Um, so if you do have a, an expense that maybe is, is quite common, for example, I see telephone bills or um, certain trips, mileage trips you can do, you can duplicate that expense in order to not have to enter that information again. So that's by clicking the three dots in the top right corner here. Additionally, if you just tap the receipt image, it will pull up the full receipt. And you'll see another three dots in the upper right corner. So anytime you see three dots, it's going to give you a couple more options. Here I have just delete receipt. Now in this case, all the information would remain, but the, the receipt image itself would get deleted. Detach receipt would separate the receipt image from the information. Um, so it would essentially create two different expenses. We'll see it if sometimes people upload the wrong receipt image with the wrong information. Um, you can actually go ahead and separate them that way. And then add new receipt would be if you needed to add another page or another receipt image to that same expense. Um, seen quite commonly if there's multiple PDF pages, for example, or if you have a very long receipt and in order to capture the information on the receipt, you need to take multiple photos. We often see that one with Costco because they give you receipts that are about three feet long. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. I'm going to use the back arrow here to get back to the expense, and then back arrow one more time to get back to my main expense report. So here you'll now see that there's one expense, uh, Delaware North, meals. If I actually need to change any information, I can just tap into the expense itself, and it'll bring me back to this editing field. So that's the first way to upload a photo. The second method is actually to use photos that have already been stored in your phone's library. So if I click the green plus icon again and swipe right twice, it'll pull up your photos. Um, so you can select the receipts you want to upload and click import. So I'm going to go ahead and select these three, click import, and it's going to start to process that information again. So date, merchant, amount. Now this is useful because maybe you are on the road or in a place where the Wi-Fi or signal is bad. And you can actually take photos of your receipts, store them to your phone, and upload them at a later time. Again, feel free to tap into anything when it's uploading if you want to categorize it. Um, if I actually navigate back, you'll see that quite a few are uploading. Um, so, for example, the, the meals expense, the U.S. Postal Service expense, 
Another thing you'll see is that quite a few of them do already have expense categories. Now, Tally will start to learn certain associations the more frequently you use them. So for example, if you always map United States Postal Service to the postage and shipping expense category, Tally will start to learn that association and auto-categorize it for you. So it looks like, there we go, the $25. So everything was red, and it looks like that modern China cafe amount is just processing. So let that go ahead and process it, or process that for us here. Um, so if I do need to go back in and add information for, I can. Um, additionally, if the receipt image was read incorrectly, you can go ahead and overwrite it and just do a manual mapping. Um, Always make sure you do go through and add the necessary information. Some people do require receipts or require certain pieces of information depending on your account setup. Um, however, you can always update the data later on the website if it is easier for you. Now, there are two more methods to add expenses using the app. First, if you click the green plus icon and swipe right once, you'll be able to enter in mileage. Now, the first way you can do this is to actually type in your start location. So if I tap into add start address here, I'm going to go ahead and just enter our office down here in San Francisco. Now the one key with using mileage is you always want to select something from the drop down menu. Um, so if I just start to type in this, locations will load, always select something from this. And the reason for that is that we integrate with Google Maps and we'll actually pull the distance or calculate the distance traveled for you and then automatically calculate your reimbursement amount. This is based on a rate that your admin has set on the back end, um, but we'll do all the calculation for you. So I'm going to tap 525 2nd Street and I'm also going to tap into choose stop location. It will remember any of your recently used. Um, this is for all of the information in Tally, so expense categories, classes, if you had any other required fields. I'm going to tap SFO. You'll see we calculated it automatically. Um, in the top right corner here, this is how you can make it one way versus round trip. If I just tap on that, you'll get the double arrows and it shows it's a round trip charge. Now I'm going to leave this a single and then click the green Save Trip button and you'll see that'll start to load. We have 13.66 miles, which based on my 16 came out to $7.38. So that's mileage here. Now, the next option is actually to swipe all the way to the right to get the manual expense. Now, this is similar to actually clicking the plus icon here in the top left corner. It's just manually entering the information. So if I wanted to tap, let's do Starbucks, done. I'm going to do a meals expense. Oh, here we go. Meals. I'm going to make this, I got coffee for my company. Done. I'm going to enter coffee for company. Done and save expense. So it's very basic, just enter all the information. Now, when I did that manual entry, you will see that out of policy flag pop up. This is something that some of you may see depending on what your account admin has set up. So if you actually just tap on that out of policy flag, it's going to pop up with an, a message of why the poli or why that expense is out of policy. So in my case, Yvonne's end user training requires a receipt and all expenses that exceed $50. So I would need to add a receipt in order to clear that out of policy message. So now we're back at the main report page. I'm going to go ahead and click into that Modern China Cafe in order to give it an amount. 2319, done, save, and navigate back. Now there are a couple of different things that you can do on this page, including moving expenses to different reports and mass delete. So maybe I want to group all of the meals expenses together. What you will do is tap this icon to the left of the expense. So if I just tap this, you'll see I'll get a bunch of different options here. I can just go ahead and tap down the list, and then you'll have three buttons at the bottom. Now one thing to note is that if you do only tap two expenses, you'll get an additional option. This feature here is our merge feature. So if you ever upload two expenses 
into the system, and maybe they are the same and you want to combine them into one single expense, you can tap both of those expenses and click this Merge button, and it will ask you if you want to merge these expenses. So that's an option if you do click two expenses. Now, if I click all four, you'll see this green checkbox. That's a select that's the select all option if I want to. The trash can icon would obviously mass delete. So if you were going through and maybe cleaning up some expenses or you realized you couldn't actually reimburse certain ones, um, you can use the mass delete feature. But the middle option, this is the move expenses option. And this is a little bit more advanced as I did mention earlier, but if I click that, it allows you to move it to a new expense report. So I've now moved those four over. You'll see now if I actually go ahead and tap into this, my unsubmitted reports, I have the new expenses report, which was my original report, and it does contain all of the non-meals expenses. And then I have this ex expenses for, oops, let me go back, expenses for 2015, which is just the date range, it's just what's going to be the default expense report name here. Um, so I can go ahead and edit any of this information if I need to. I can move the options back and forth if I have to. Um, if you want to rename the report, you can just tap on this here. So let's say I want to actually call it Yvonne's Meals Expenses. Meals Expenses. Perfect. Done. I can rename that there, make it a little bit easier. Um, again, you can try and format your reports in the app if you want to, but the main thing you will want to do is get the receipts uploaded and coded so that you can later access them via tally on the website as well. Now, if you're able to get everything formatted correctly, you can click the green Submit button in the top right corner to submit the report. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. You'll see it'll say Expense Report Submitted. In the background, you saw all of those four expenses were submitted as well, which is why they vanished off the purchases screen. If I tap this, you'll see now I have one unsubmitted report and one submitted report. And this is pending approval from my approver. Now, if you accidentally submit a report, you do have the option to unsubmit in order to pull the report back. However, you can only do this if the report has yet to be approved. So if I go ahead and click Unsubmit, you'll see that's going to pull those back, and everything's showing up now in the Purchases page. Now, you can also delete an entire report by clicking the three bars in the upper left corner and clicking that Edit Reports button at the bottom. Now, this is pretty a uh, pretty risky thing to do because if you do delete a report, you will also delete all of the expenses and receipts that correspond with that report. So we highly suggest that you use this delete report option infrequently. That's a quick summary of how the Tally app works. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any end user questions. Please feel free to reach out to us if you do have any questions, queries, or general feedback. Um, there's three main ways you can reach us. The first is this How Can I Help button in the bottom right corner. This is our chat feature. So you can go ahead and chat us between the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. PST. Additionally, if you go to our support site, support.tally.com, you'll see our email and our phone number at the top here. Um, so if you do want to send us a quick email or give us a call, you can certainly do that. And again, that's support.tally.com. I want to thank you all for joining me this morning and enjoy the rest of your day.